So this is our first week of awareness meditation training. And today, uh, what we're gonna do is basically open the door to awareness meditation. And uh, we have questions like, what is awareness and how do we meditate and practice awareness, okay? Um, I consider this talk and this week of practice more of like a tour of awareness meditation, a sampler platter of sorts, you know, because there are so many ways to uh, attune, to directly experience awareness itself. There's a lot of ways to practice with it. And so I want to give you opportunities to find different doorways into it. And actually, that's what a lot of the training will be is exploring different practices to uh, recognize awareness, to, to work with obstacles. And um, there are many, many doorways. So um, I encourage you to see what resonates, see what piques your interest, what sparks something in your experience. And you can follow that up later. And um, if something doesn't make sense, that's okay. You can kind of let it drift off. You, don't, you Nothing needs to make sense, okay? So you can take the pressure off as far as that goes. And we're gonna cover a lot of ground here too. So. Um, we have three questions that we can ask about awareness. Very simple. What is awareness? And for that, we're going to look at practices to recognize awareness for yourself, even if it's a glimpse. Um, two, how do, how do we practice awareness meditation? So we're going to explore techniques to more easily and consistently recognize awareness, to make it more of a consistent experience that you can rest in awareness in practice. And how do we work with obstacles? Then we have the question, how do we go beyond practice? Okay. And this means like where awareness, our experience of awareness, resting in awareness becomes more spontaneous. Um, it's just more natural. Um, it's integrated into our life beyond formal practice. Okay. Now these three questions actually correlate to a very classic teaching from Sogjin. Sogjin is a tradition I come from um, and Sogjin is very, much focused on awareness. Awareness meditation is core to, to Sogjin. And uh, Francis and I decided to use this teaching called Garab Dorje's Three Statements to kind of structure the overall phases of this training. And so for a few moments here, I'm gonna share with you some geeky traditional stuff in as simple terms as I can do. And then we're gonna get into very just open, easy discussion about awareness. But um, to start off, Garab Dorje, I'm going to give you, I hardly ever do historical things. I mean, like maybe to a, a bad degree, like I'll just say a name and I won't reference what year that person was from or <laughs> the context of traditions, but I am going to give you just a tiny bit, but know that this isn't relevant for you in awareness meditation. It's just if you're interested and want to follow up on the information. So Garab Dorje um, uh, was supposedly lived 55 CE. If you look in Wikipedia, it will describe Garab, Garab Dorje as a semi-historical human. So it's like, we don't know if Garab Dorje existed or not, or the tradition created Garab Dorje. Um, and Garab Dorje, I have a little tanka print out of Garab Dorje. And what's great about this image is you can see Garab Dorje has a stance here with his, he's pointing his finger towards you. This is pointing out your true nature, pointing out awareness, look. Look for yourself right now in your experience. And you can even see an open stance, like it's not cross-legged. There's, there's a sense of, of openness, which also correlates to awareness. There's a lot we could say about all the symbology here, but I just wanted to show you Garab Dorje. Now Garab Dorje, um, uh, the, the story goes, received teachings from Vajrasattva, who is a, a deity in Tibetan Buddhism. So not even a human, a deity, a bodhisattva, and considered the first teacher of Sogjin. Okay, so um, this was the original Sogjin teacher in this tradition that is very much focused on awareness. So this is why we feel like this is pretty relevant to this training. In a similar way that the insight tradition has mindfulness really central. So if you wanna you know, find a tradition that's like all about mindfulness, the insight tradition really focuses mindfulness. Sogjin really focuses awareness, doesn't really focus mindfulness very much. Um, and then after Garab Dorje, one other person you might have heard of is Guru Padmasambhava, Guru Rinpoche. It's a, he's a central figure of one of the lineages, the Nyigma lineage of uh, Tibetan Buddhism. And I have a little statue of Guru Rinpoche here. And actually what's interesting about him 
is he, uh, he most likely came from what is now Pakistan. And I just love it. I don't, I just love that Buddhism is all over the place in the world in uh, interesting ways. So, um, that's just a little bit of the lineage context here. Now, for these statements, okay, they're very, very simple. Three statements that are basically represent a map of awakening, a map of working with awareness. And with each of these statements, there are um, a group of practices specifically meant for each statement. You can call them categories of practice, ways of working with awareness. And we're going to explore some of those ways in very simple. We're not pulling super traditional practices. We're going to use social meditation and guided meditation for this. Um, but this is where they're coming from. So the three statements, I'm going to use Ken McLeod's translations here. You can find several translations out there. And he actually has an article um, on, I think, Lion's Roar, maybe, one of those magazines, where he actually explores what it means to translate something. And he's a fantastic translator. But he gives a literal translation and then an experiential translation. The experiential is really great, but I'm gonna read the literal first. So the first statement is recognize directly your own nature. So remember the pointing. Number one, recognize directly your own nature. Two, decide directly on one option. Three, continue directly with confidence in release. Okay, now as he points out in, in, his trans, in this article, he says, yeah, you know, the literal translation, it, it's, kind of clunky. Now for his experiential, he uses a, a, a quite a different translation here. There, this is what you are. There, nothing else matters. There, now let it unfold. So here we're starting to get into the spirit of like, how do we practice with awareness? And then we're gonna need, we're gonna unpack this a lot more. Um, I wanna read you one more traditional um, brief commentary on each of these statements. And here you're going to start hearing some words that are a little bit more inside the Buddhist uh, realm of vocabulary, but we're going to unpack these in simpler terms. Um, so this is commentary from Dujum Rinpoche. Uh, the first statement, he says, fresh immediate awareness of the present moment, transcending all thoughts related to the three times, past, present, future, is itself that primordial awareness. So transcending all thoughts as we're going to explore here, that means awareness isn't limited to any thought we have. And actually awareness is typically, if we're not conscious of it, uh, we're not aware of awareness. It's like the background of all thoughts. So all the thoughts of past, present, and future, if we're consumed with that, we're not seeing awareness, but awareness is always here. Now, the second statement, whatever phenomena of samsara and nirvana, and here this just means whatever we consider enlightenment or not enlightenment, whatever we consider suffering or liberation, uh, whatever phenomena of, of samsara and nirvana may manifest, all of them represent the play of the creative energy or potentiality of one's own immediate intrinsic awareness. Okay, now this, as we're gonna explore, it means that there's, there's no, we're always aware, there's no obstacles to awareness. So whatever ideas we have about enlightenment or suffering or freedom or awareness is here, we're aware of that. Okay. Um, since nothing, since there is nothing that goes beyond just this, one should continue in the state of the singular and unique awareness. Therefore, one must definitively decide upon this unique state for oneself and know that there exists nothing other than this. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means there in just a minute. And then the last statement, he says, whatever gross or subtle thoughts may arise by merely recognizing their nature, they arise and self-liberate simultaneously where emptiness and appearance are inseparable. Therefore, one should continue directly in confidence in their liberation. Okay. Again, for those three commentaries, don't worry. If you're scratching your head or saying, eh, what does this mean? Don't worry about it. We're going to now exit the kind of traditional uh, formal description and just kind of have a little bit more open exploration of what awareness is. So, but basically these three statements help us recognize awareness, help us to practice and let it become more stable experience, our recognition and resting in awareness to work with obstacles and then to have it more deeply integrated into our life, this resting in awareness, no matter what we're doing and outside of practice. This doesn't mean that we're always resting in awareness, just that we can have this experience outside of a formal practice. Now, 
I want to explore in a kind of open way, what is awareness? What are some of the ways that we, we might describe awareness and kind of point it out? So, and there's no really particular order here. These things that we're going to say are just words trying to point at something that is beyond words. Um, there's this, when we're resting in awareness, there's an experience of vastness. Awareness is vast and spacious like the sky. There's no beginning or end to awareness. We can't find a beginning and end to awareness. It just is. Uh, there's no form, there's no center, there's no location for awareness, so we can't pinpoint awareness. It's not something produced or destroyed, so we're not constructing awareness, and it's not falling apart either. Things arise and pass in awareness, but awareness just continues. And there's a sense of luminosity, of clarity in awareness, that when something arises in awareness, it can be known, it can be recognized. And uh, there's a lot of ways of describing that, you know, like a mirror, anything comes in front of a mirror, a mirror reflects it immediately. Um, the awareness is like a mirror. So as far as practicing with awareness and, and noticing more of these qualities, um, there is an emphasis at first on letting go of all sense of doing. And this, in many of your check-ins describing like, hey, what, what is this awareness practice and why is it difficult? The reason why we find it difficult at first is because it actually means letting go of all doing. And then there's a question of like, well, how do you do that? Well, like, you don't do that. <laughs> That's more doing. Uh, but there are ways, there are ways and techniques to work with this. So you're not just left with like a good luck and everything you say is negated, you know? No, there's ways to work with this. Um, but we're loosening our identification with doing and resting with a simple feeling of being. Um, we're not directing our attention anywhere because that's just happening in awareness, okay? We're trying to let go of directing attention. We're not objectifying anything. We're not manipulating anything. We're not trying to identify with anything. We're not trying to evaluate anything. So if any of these things arise, one, I mean, I'm going to give you some, uh, some examples of simple uh, practices and instructions but they all kind of start sounding the same in the end. It's just like, if you notice evaluation rising, you let it go. If you notice identification happening, sense of doing, control, we let it go. Um, and we're not making choices. That, that's, not, that's not the practice here. And that's the reason why um, sometimes it's, it's described as choiceless awareness. You know, uh, choices can arise in awareness, but that's not awareness, you know. And we'll say in the end, this is for pointing the uh, purposes of pointing out. In the end, we don't make a distinction between awareness and what's arising in awareness, you know, as far as like awakening and liberation goes. But here in pointing it out, we it's helpful to disentangle what arises in awareness and awareness itself. So uh, what else to say here? Yeah, there's nothing, again, there's nothing we're going to do or not do that's going to make awareness revealed to us ourselves. We're, you are aware right now. We're aware right now. Okay. So the way that we practice with this is, is different. Um, uh, you, we're going to work with some phrases that will help you kind of remember this in a minute. Uh, also, last, I want to say there's no obstacle to awareness. This is a very different. So any movement we have, in, in thought and in experience is an obstacle to awareness, which often feels like that at first. It's, and in concentration, for example, movement's a problem. Like we, if we move from an object that we're focused on, we recognize that and come back to the object. There's an intention and there are obstacles. Here, there's not an obstacle. And in, in the paradoxical way, thinking that it's an obstacle is the obstacle. <laughs> it's good. It starts undoing itself in really funny ways. Um, and actually some of the ways that we can work with this, uh, with deepening or stabilizing our experience of resting in awareness is to experience awareness while we move. And we'll actually do a little bit of that later in the training. Um, thoughts aren't a problem. The objects of sensory are, are, are the sense organs and sensory consciousness are not a problem. So things can move. We can hear sounds. We can feel things. None of these things are obstacles. Now, 
there's always an asterisk here that like in terms of uh, emphasizing an integral dharma, we recognize that if we're working with awareness, we're working in this very particular context of waking up and meditation. And that, for example, if you're meditating and, you, and your house starts catching fire, you don't, you're not going to sit there and say like, oh, this is no obstacle. No, we're going to respond to the emergency and do what's needed. But in formal meditation, as long as there's not an emergency arising, then we're, we're working with letting go of, of experiencing everything as an obstacle to awareness. Okay. And then in the end, we are, you know, we're, we're working with the paradox of being and doing. At first, we're really emphasizing resting and being, and then also recognizing that doing and being happen at the same time. They're inseparable. Now, uh, a couple of examples of some practice instructions. Uh, Shinzen Young, who's a wonderful teacher, has a do nothing instruction, uh, do nothing technique. And he says the, the technique is pretty simple. Uh, let whatever happens happen. As soon as you are aware of an intention to control your attention, drop the intention. Okay. Let whatever happens happen. As soon as you're aware of an intention to control your attention, drop the intention. Okay. Now, a couple of subtle pointers here. And awareness training is often about subtle pointers in practice. He says that there's nothing in this technique that says that you should maintain an intention to drop intentions. That's another intention. Okay. What we do is we let go. This gets easier and easier, but at first that's why we have to have a glimpse of this and a kind of a, a taste of this. But then we're, we're resting and we, we feel an intention. We, we recognize, oh, I'm, I'm intending, I'm trying to do something. Ah, I just let go. In the moment that it's recognized, then there is a dropping. But we're not trying to maintain a vigilance where we're like out looking you know, for intentions. Because awareness will, will recognize, you're, you're aware right now. It'll, it, the, the recognition will happen on its own. Okay, um, he says that uh, let whatever happens happen means that whatever sensory experiences are going to happen, just let them happen, including that you may be scattered, you may be getting sleepy, go unconscious, um, you may get lost in monkey mind, um, you may have very little concentration, clarity, equanimity. So this is very different. Other meditation practices, we say, oh, I'm trying to experience clarity or I'm trying to experience focus. But here it's saying like, if you're sleepy, you're, you let, you're sleepy. One of the best instructions I've, I've ever received, and I share it all the time in these trainings, was in a Sogjin retreat. And the teacher said, if you're uh, sleepy, if you're tired, sleep. Hmm. Because again, in this approach to, to recognize awareness, we, 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 we train in, in seeing things are not obstacles. So like, oh, I'm sleepy. Okay, let that happen. I'm distracted. Oh, that happened. Okay. Um, drop here does not mean get rid of. It's uh, in the moment. You drop the intention. The intention might come back immediately. That's fine. When it comes back, you drop it again. So here what's interesting is there, while this practice of awareness can feel subtle and elusive sometimes, for me, the bonus is that there's, there's a release of pressure. It's like, oh, you had an intention? Okay. It came back? Okay. No problem. So we can let ourselves off the hook a little bit. And actually, that's really good. The technique does not ask you to have a restful experience, Shinzen says. This is very important. There's not a goal. You're not trying to say, I'm going to get somewhere, and then it will be exactly like this. You're going to be aware. You're aware. Awareness is here. Whether you're sleepy, you're having an equanimity, experience of equanimity or whatever. So those things might arise like equanimity or clarity, but that just happens. And he has a great summary here. If there's any meditation that occurs in this technique, it's because of, uh, of all the meditation you've done before is now meditating you. You're not meditating. You, you, he says the previous moment of your practice is meditating you. It's quite interesting. Meditation is just happening. Okay, and then uh, one last uh, instruction here comes from Kim McLeod. And it is return to what is already there and rest. So similar to, to, to Shinzen's instructions, but a little different. So return to what is already there. And he talks about that the breath is already here. And so at first we might return to the breath as our practice, right? Oh, the breath is already here. I'll return to it. Then he says we can return to the body. We notice that the body's already here, regardless of whatever the, the bodily experience is, it's here. So I can return to that. 
And then as distractions kind of calm down and we start noticing the openness and clarity of mind, we notice that we can return to that as well. And we keep extending this, that like we can return to whatever is happening right here, right now. And then another instruction from him is listen in resting and rest in listening. And he says, in this listening, I'm not trying to hear something. There's no object or objective. I just listen as deeply as I'm able and learn the language of silence. Judith Blackstone, one of my teachers, and uh, who has the realization process, and uh, we'll do a little bit of her practices because she, her practice is a non-dual approach to realization and works a lot with awareness. And she says there's a practice that um, we'll do where we experience listening just happening. And she has a great instruction that you don't need to listen in order to hear, hearing just happens. So we start sensing additional like effort and direction that we have in our senses. And when we recognize that we can just let that go, we can rest in awareness. That's what happens. We're just naturally resting in awareness. So, um, yeah, the last few things I wanna share with you um, you know, when we talk about obstacles, you know, we're talking about the intention, tensions arising, control arising, we can talk about being bundled up or one of my favorite words, entangled in experience. And when we're entangled in experience, we let it untangle on its own. This is, we, we use phrases like self-liberation. So if, if my hand is gripping, I just let it ungrip, you know, and there's a loosening, there's a relaxing. But again, it's important to remember, remind ourselves that there's no expectations for a particular experience to arise here. And we just do our best and we practice. And if we're doing, if we're practicing this way, then it's great. We will see um, changes. Now I wanna read you two little passages before I wrap up this talk that are also kind of pointing out instructions. This one comes from one of my favorite texts, Self-Liberation Through Seeing with Naked Awareness. This is actually by Padmasambhava, and it is included in the Tibetan Book of the Dead. So it's the Tibetan Book of the Dead actually is composed of several texts, and this is in the beginning. This is like the practice instructions. So like you're practicing in this life, preparing for death, you're doing this one first. And this little passage here is my favorite. So now when you're introduced to your own intrinsic awareness, the method for entering into it involves three considerations. Thoughts in the past are clear and empty and leave no traces behind. Thoughts in the future are fresh and unconditioned by anything. And in the present moment, when your mind remains in its own condition without constructing anything, awareness at that moment in itself is quite ordinary. And when you look into yourself in this way nakedly without any discursive thoughts, since there is only this pure observing, there will be found a lucid clarity without anyone being there who is the observer. Only a naked manifest awareness is present. Now, a practice here with something like this is to read through this slowly by yourself, read one line at a time and see what, see what you notice, okay? Without expectation, just read it, sit with it. Read the next line, sit with it. There's, take, remove the expectation that you should have some sort of experience right now in this moment, having heard it or the next time you read it, just read it and see what, what happens. Now, the last thing I want to read you is from Ajahn Sumedho. Awareness is your refuge. Awareness of the changingness of feelings, of attitudes, of moods, of material change and emotional change. Stay with that because it's a refuge that is indestructible. It's not something that changes. It's a refuge that you can trust in. This refuge is not something that you can create. It's not a creation. It's not an ideal. It's very practical and very simple, but easily overlooked or not noticed. When you're mindful, you're beginning to notice it's like this. So this is another great passage that you could return to and read just a little bit at a time. And there are great pointing out instructions there. So that's all for the introduction to awareness. <laughs>